All right, folks, hello, welcome back to another quick UE5 tutorial. And in this tutorial today, I'm going to be going over how to set up texture offset. Now, what that is, that is basically, well, <laughs> literally, it enables you to uh, move the texture on the um, left to right and up and down. That's that's how, well, that's what an offset is. It allows you to offset the texture. And we're going to be setting that up. Now, this is the exact same project that we left off in in the previous one, which had to do with setting up the normal intensity modifier. And now the reason why that's actually, uh, well, the reason why I'm actually in this project as well is because uh, for a lot of beginners, when they try to set up both a texture offset as well as a normal um, intensity, um, they run into issues. Uh, actually, you know, I think that's texture scaling. So that's sort of off topic, I guess. So I'm not even going to say what I was about to say. Um, well, okay, so I'll just say it. Okay, so usually when they when they go to uh, set that up, both the texture scaling as well as the texture offset, um, they run into issues with their texture coordinate node because they're trying to make it do two different things in two different locations at the exact same time. And what usually ends up happening is they make it to do is is um, they make it do two different things at two different locations at the same time unintentionally. Well, actually, all it really does is does everything at once. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, in 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 <laughs> that is troublesome, especially for a beginner, because they're they're just like, well, I need to find a workaround, and then you know they're scouring the the web, <laughs> and it's just to no avail. You know, they're entering that abyss of being lost with no direction. So, we're setting this up a specific way, which will enable us to both set up a, a texture uh, scaling uh, modifier as well. Uh, well, in combination to this texture offset. I'll probably end up showing up a separate video for the texture scaling one um, only because, again, I like these to be, you know, sort of as short and sweet as possible. And this one, we're only focusing on the texture offset. So with that said, let's get right into this material that we left off with previously, MM cast iron. So we left off here. Now, what we're going to need is a texture coordinate node. This, um, Texture coordinate node. So basically, any red node in the material editor uh, gives you um, uh, external information outside of the material. So that's that's sort of uh, that's why this is red, and the red nodes are very important, very important. Um, and so now that we have the texture coordinate node, we're going to need an add node. Now we're just going to plug this one into A, and then from B, we can all, actually all we need is a constant two vector. Let's open up this palette here and drag over constant two vector. Now, as you can see, we're actually almost done. Uh, because this is, we can actually just go ahead and plug this into the UVs right now. <laughs> and we're looking great. Now, if we were to plug this in, and okay, so so here's the thing. Um, this is our massive material. And if you're, you know, if you're understanding the way UE works, um, you're you're going to want to set up everything in your in your master material and then apply material instances to all of your meshes. That way you can easily edit all of the um, variables in real time. Now, if you were to sort of um, do that for this setup as well, then you're going to need to convert this node into a parameter. Now, if we were to do that, let's convert this to parameter. Let's call this one uh, offsets. Let's call this texture offset. And then let's just say you went to ahead and plug this into B. You'd have an issue. Arithmetic between types float two and three on the fine and valid input types. Then you'd be again <laughs> scouring the, the dark webs this time into that abyss <laughs> of trying to find your way when you're lost. So we're not actually going to do that. What we're going to do instead is use an append node. Now we're going to set this up using the blue in the alpha channel. So just hear me out. Okay, because it might sound a little complicated if you're new. Um, so that's why I'm going to simplify this as best as, as possible. So again, if you were to convert that texture, um, that constant two vector node into a parameter, and again, to do that, all you have to do is um, right click on it. So, and then hit convert to parameter. Now, some of you are gonna be like, oh, I see three, I see two commas, there's three variables, you know? And then you're gonna drag out a constant two vector. And you're gonna be like, there's only two, I'm scared. So <laughs> I'll just redo it. <laughs> so to convert it to a parameter, just uh, constant two vector, right click on it to parameter it's called this offset once again now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure this is selected scroll down to channel names 
So it'll be in the details window. And then we're going to have the channel's names. Now we have RGBNA. That stands for red, green, blue, and alpha. And this is basically the no for all of them combined. Now, because we're only doing the, um, the offset, which is on two different axes, so we're moving from left to right, so that's about the Y or the X axis, and then as well as up and down, that is the Z axis. Now, because we're doing it this way, we're actually only going to need two of these pins. So let's actually call this blue one um, X um, offset. Well, let's just call this uh, X axis. There we go. Let's call this um, other one Y axis or Z axis, I guess technically. You really want to call it z-axis. Um, now, it might actually be the other way around, but we're going to find out. <laughs> okay. So now that we have named these two, uh, that way we know what they do, um, let's go ahead and actually just scroll. I will uh, drag out a, a pin, and let's just drag out an a pin node. So if you were to use an a pin vector node, plug that into A, that into B. Now we plug that into that B, and now everything looks golden. Everything looks great, really. Now, we, if we were to hit apply and save, there's no issues. We're actually chilling. So if we were to go ahead and create a material instance, so to do that, just right click on it, create material instance. Now let's go ahead and apply this material instance to our mesh. Done. If we were to actually go into this. Uh, I don't know the offset. Now, if now because we named it, now we know that this is x axis and, and z axis. Um, so don't worry about the r and the g because that won't do anything that you want it to do, obviously. But if we were to use this x axis, now we can see it's rotating sort of like the planet, right? Pretty chill. I mean, you can move it forward and backwards, whichever you want. Now, if we were to do the same for the z axis, we're moving it up, moving it down. And there you go. I mean, this is how it works. You could apply this to any sort of mesh, not just sort of circular ones to make it look like a planet. You can apply it to the this setup over here if you really wanted to. I mean, this is perfect. And this also enables us to have wiggle room to set up a texture scaling, uh, which I think I might show you how to do in the next tutorial because, again, I want to keep this one as short as possible. Now, with that said, we're finished here. This is how you set it up. <laughs> Uh, now that you know, you can always use this kind of method as well as this naming um, um, setup. So that way you can always know exactly what it does. And again, if you were to use the G or the blue, it's not really doing anything. Uh, that's because they're useless. <laughs> so we are finished. Now, as always, folks, best of luck with, uh, to you and your UE5 endeavors, because as, all, as I always like to say, and it's surely difficult when you don't know what you're doing, which is why I, you know, make these videos, because I remember when I was a beginner starting out and I was struggling and I was, you know, searching that I was hey, I was in that abyss <laughs> looking for answers where it's like I couldn't find anything. And yeah, so I, I decided to start making these tutorials to help people out. Um, let me know what you think of this video um, in the comment section down below. And it would really help a lot if you guys could. Um, you know, leave a like as well as subscribe and, and leave a nice comment too to really help this video out in the algorithm because, you know, I do provide high quality, uh, you know, sweet information to really help everyone out. And so that would just really help me out. So it was like a favor. Um, I would really appreciate it if you did. Thank you for that. Other than that, I'll leave you to your UE5 project. Best of luck.